Hi, Stacy. We're a few minutes early. I like to come in a little bit early and make sure everything's working okay. I hope you can hear me. Hey, Jamie. Let me switch over really quick and go on over to the winner, winner, chicken dinner, bingo board. Make sure everybody coming in has numbers. Uh, Stacy, I don't know if you have a number or not. Um, yes, you do. You got 50. So you're good. You're good, good, good. Hi, Sue. Hey, Bonnie. Hey, Poochie. And since I was unable to do live last week because I felt so puny, we are going to do two winners this week. Two different prizes, two different winners. Oh, how did I do that? Let's see. There we go. I really didn't need the time, but we'll take it. Hey, Gerald. Hey, Mary. Hey, Patricia. Hey, Sharon. Karen or Claire? I think it's Claire, but I'm. I, she's logged in with Karen. I think that's Claire, though. Hey, Sue. Sue B. I got Sue B and Sue C. Okay, everybody, if you have a number, please keep your number to make it easy. If you do not have a number, I will need one off the list that is not chosen. Um, so if you don't see your name on the list, then I will need a number from you that's not taken. And any of you guys who are new patrons, hey Alice, any of you new patrons who don't know what um, Winner Winner Chicken Dinner Bingo is, is I have a little bucket of numbers and each week I draw out of those numbers for our winners. And um, that person wins the happy mail for the day. Let me uncover all the unused numbers so I can get to them here. Sharon wants 37. 37 is taken by Vicki Parker. Sharon, can you pick another number for me? If you look on your screen, you'll see if that has a name beside the number, it is taken. <laughs> Gerald has B1. <laughs> And like I said, some of you guys are just coming in. I didn't wasn't live last week because I didn't feel good. So we're going to do two winners this weekend. Winner, winner, chicken dinner, bingo. It's too small to read. Let me zoom it up for you and see if that will help. Is that a little bit better for you, Sharon? Nana Kippy 26. And so we're calling you Kathy now. Kathy Snyder. I'll fix Kathy. Okay, Sharon 38. And just while uh, we're going over this, um, the way that it works is you keep your number and it stays in the bucket and every week I draw from that bucket. If I draw your number and you're not here, then your number goes back into the free numbers and your name gets erased off of there and it becomes available for whoever wants it. So you have to be here every week to keep your number, but you can keep it as long as it's not drawn. You have to be present to win. Mary wants 61.
Harry Rutiers. Got it. I hope I didn't slaughter that. I hope I pronounced it right. Okay, so we're going to cover several things tonight, and I will take numbers uh, for the next 10 or 15 minutes as people come in. Uh, let me save that before I forget and close it out and I'll lose somebody's number. Um, we're going to cover any questions that anybody has about Design Space. You know, as always, just ask. We'll go over it, and we, we will keep going over it to make sure that you understand. We're not going to leave anybody uh, out there trying to work on a project that they can't get done because they don't know how. So that always stands as usual. A uh, couple of people have been asking me about print and cut. So we're going to cover that uh, really quick and go over print and cut and how you do that. Um, and then we'll get, we're going to make the red truck that lights up that I posted earlier in the week or last week, end of last week. So, anybody that comes in and needs to see the bingo board, let me know. Right now I'm going to switch over to Design Space. Um, if you are a Patreon um, exclusive member, then you have the Red Truck file. If not, it's pretty easy to recreate, so you can recreate it yourself, or you can up your um, Patreon pledge and get it. Uh, Claudia? I think Claudia has a number in Winter Winter Chicken Dinner. I thought I saw Claudia in here. Uh, I'm not sure. Claudia, you may need to pick a number. Any number that you see there, then you'll be able in 32. There you are. You are right. Thank you. Um, I just overlooked it. So let's go ahead and cover some print and cut. Even if they're not here yet, they'll be here and they can always watch the playback. Uh, some of you guys know how to do this, but let's cover it for those who don't. So the first thing you want to do, Catherine Doyle wants I-20. If I could type, that would help, right? Got you. All right. Hi, Vicki. Hi, Disa. Okay, so print and cut. The way that you do that, uh, one of the new people, hey, Debbie, good to see you. Um, they had a label they wanted to do, so I'm going to type in, they actually wanted the brackets type label, and it always comes up better for me with the, oh, not brackets, bracket. It always comes up easier for me on that one. So this is the shape that she was looking for, and she wanted to make a tag out of it. So the first thing you would do is to get your image, insert it, then ungroup it unless you want that second layer if you just want a single layer I believe the one she was using was a single layer if it's double you're just going to leave them grouped and slice one layer at a time and I like to take my tags down to about a 0.15 I find that that's plenty big enough usually unless you're using a really fat ribbon um, then you might want to go up to a quarter inch but then I just put it about where I want it in height and then I align horizontally and slice it. So once you've done that, you've created that tag. I'm just going to get rid of this. You would just uh, leave those positioned together and move the top one out of the way and slice your hole in the same place for the other one if you're doing a double layer. So the next thing that she would need to do at that point is put in her text. I got an S in there too. There we go. Um, put in her text in whatever image. I think she had a pink heart on there as well. Just going to grab a heart and make it pink. We're just going to pretend that we have everything that we want. 
And then she's put in all of her text. She selected her font. Once the font is selected, you can select it all. And then you come down to the bottom right here and you flatten. And then when you send that over to make it, it is going to print and cut everything in the colors that you have. If you're putting this on a colored cardstock, you're going to want to change that tag to white. So in case you've forgotten to do that, you'll want to go in and ungroup it and change that to white because white does not print, which does make it hard to see on the canvas. Here, let me change that so you can see it. So you can you want to make that white and do that. Now if you are wanting it to write on there and then print and cut everything else, you're going to pick your writing font or change your font to writing, um, whatever it is that you're looking for it to do. And we have the new feature now where we can just select this and attach. And so it's going to print and cut the tag and then it's going to turn around and write the text on there for you. But we can now flatten our writing text so if you want to save that ink and time and everything else you can now flatten the writing fonts on there like you could the others. So is everybody clear on print and cut now? And if you have a maker we were doing tips and tricks. Jamie will tell you we've done everything. We have done the boxes to go around with the airs and the air twos to make them print and cut on colored paper. So there are ways around if you do not have a maker that you can print on colored paper. You just have to take a few more steps. Myself, I found that if I went to the best print quality with my printer, I could do colored paper in my air um, with no problem. I didn't have to fudge any registration marks or anything like that to make it do it. I didn't have to darken them. Mine would just do it, but I was in a very well-lit room, and mine worked for me. But with the Maker, you don't have to worry about that. You can print and cut on color paper and not have to do anything special. If you want to do a bunch of them, Sue, once you've got it all set, you're just going to uh, hit Make It. And then over here on the where you're preparing your mats, the prepare screen, you're just going to up the quantity. Say you needed 25 of them for whatever reason, you're just going to change it 20, 25, and hit apply. And it's going to do as many as it can get in the print and cut area for you, which is 6.75 by 925. Is that right, guys? Or if I got it backwards, is it 625975? I never can remember. Yes, Alice, with the Maker, you can do uh, printed on color paper. So if you wanted to do this, that's why I say make the tag white, and then you can print it on blue paper if you want, and it's going to print this out on blue paper. But if you make your tag blue, it's going to print blue on top of that blue paper. White is the only color that doesn't print. So when you're using colored paper, you need to make sure that you have this set on white. If you're printing on white paper, then you can change the tag to a color. So if I were going to say I wanted this to be a cream color, um, and I had white paper, I'm just going to come down here and change this color to that cream color, and then I'm going to print it on white paper. Otherwise, you want it to be white. You're very welcome. And you can do that with any image. I just used a heart here, but you, any, any of the images in Design Space um, can be flattened. So if you've got something that's got a gazillion pieces on it, Let's just take this little dog, for instance, and you want to put him on there or you want to make him a print and cut, you can just flatten that. Instead of cutting all those teeny tiny piece, uh, pieces, you can just flatten that out and he will print and then cut and it will cut around his little legs there and everything. So that's the you can do that with any of the cut images in Design Space.
So let's just go ahead and cover and make sure that everybody understands. Um, once you've done this screen, you're going to hit continue. I've got something in there for 99 cents, and I don't know what it is. Uh, oh, it's probably that font. I don't know. Let me get rid of that. Let's hit make it. There we go. Once you're um, over here, you hit continue after you've selected the number of copies that you want. And then you're going to send it to your printer. And then you're going to select your printer. You want to leave the bleed on or you could end up with a white edge. If your bleed is on and you're still getting that white edge on part of it, you need to calibrate your machine. Otherwise, you're good to go. Um, and then your advanced options, you can go in and change your options. If you're printing on sticker paper or uh, labels, whatever it is that you're printing on, you'll want to select that um, so that it feeds through the rear feeder if it's a thick material like the thick sticker paper because a lot of times if you try to put it through the paper feed it will jam and that's what a lot of people say the Cricut uh, stickers can be too thick but they're not made to go through the paper roller. Some, some printers will accept it but most prefer that material in the rear feed. And once you've done that, it's going to print it out with that registration box. And then you just continue on cutting as normal. Right. Yeah, so some of them that are really, really dark, uh, you, you can't print and cut on black paper. I mean, most for one, it's probably not going to show up for you. So... That's when you want to use your white paper and pick a color if you need something that's dark so that it prints properly. Okay, so that covers design space. Let's go over and take a look at what's going on. And I just wanted to say, let me get over there. We had some viewer mail this week. Let's see. I want to say thanks to Sue. She won the winner winner chicken dinner. She won the little flamingo stamps and, and the little sets. And it came out so cute. I love that. I love that little flamingo. He's so cute. You did a good job on that, Sue. Thank you so much. It was much, much appreciated. Rub a smile to my face. So... We've got that going. I've got my numbers here, and I had a couple people pick, and I need to come back and, and take a quick look. Uh, Catherine, I-20, I need to throw that number in the bucket. Let's see. Let me make sure I've got all my numbers straight. Uh, 22, 25, 24. They are not in there. Just want to make sure I'm not leaving anybody out. There's number 20. Who else picked a number? Mary picked 61. There you go. She's in there. We just updated um, Kathy Snyder's. We just updated. 26 is already in there. Debbie has a number. I think that's everybody. That's the only numbers I added. Right? I'm just scrolling back, guys. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask them. 38. Somebody had 38. There we go. 38 goes in. That was Sharon Schaefer's. That's right. Got Mary Sharon. I uh, updated Kathy. Somebody had 37. That's Vicki Parker. No, that she asked for 37 and it was taken. That's we're good to go. Yay! Okay, so throughout tonight's live, we will sometime you're still in there, um Disa, you're still there right before. You still have before. You only lose it if I draw your number and you're not present to win. That's when you lose your number. 
So, at some point during tonight's live, I will draw, um, and then I'll draw another one at the end. We're doing two this week. Tonight, we're going to put together this card, and we're going to show how to use the chibi lights that make the cards light up. And you can do these in several different um, variations in tons of cards you can but I'm going to show you the basics of how to put it together um, Jamie made a card I think with the star that lit up in it and reminded me I had tried this last year and made this file and then I couldn't get my lights to work so I just canned the idea and then when she got hers to work we talked about it and I figured out how to get mine working so let's see we're going to go over doing that and let's see what tonight's winners are going to get one of you and this is from last week so it's going to get the dinosaur stamp set and die and who was here when we did the I might have done it on it may have been the Patreon file where the gift box lifts up where we did that one and the lid moved this die will work with that so that um, the mouth will lift up and you can put something in his mouth that says roar or a gift or something so there's some little bitty stamps where you can make his mouth open up and do that file that we did a couple of weeks ago You may need to refresh if you're getting some buffering. I'm showing that we have a good, strong live feed. Um, I don't have anything on my Wi-Fi except you guys. So that's all that we have going. Let's see. I can close that. might help in my notes. And I want to remind you guys, uh, also, next week I will be at the Cricket Mountain Makeathon, so there will not be a live next week. So I'll do two winners week after next as well. So one of you are going to get that, and you're going to get the um, candy bar box that I made with a candy bar in it, of course, for one of our winner winner chicken dinners. The other one is going to also get their candy bar, but it's not going to be in the wrapper. And I don't know why the plastic keeps coming off these. I will tape that for you so it doesn't come undone. You're going to get a roll of the copper tape. You're going to get two batteries and three of the chibi lights. So that's enough to do this truck card with and another card similar to what Jamie did with the uh, star that lit up. So that's enough lights to do two cards or you can even get another battery and do three cards. There's more than enough copper tape to do several cards. So that's what the winner winner chicken dinners are going to get this week. So let's go ahead and draw one. And this one is going to be for the stamp set, stamp and die set. So let's see what number comes out of here. It's pink. 44, Alice Rogers. Yay, Alice! And I have your address, Alice, so I'll get that out to you in tomorrow's mail. Alice, you are here, correct? I know she was because she was we she we answered questions for her. Yay, there she is. You're going to get the stamp set, Alice, and um, the chocolate bar. So let's go ahead and start working on this card. This one is it. I when I gave you guys the file, I don't know if all of you saw it or not. I told you to go and cut a secondary, especially if you're using this corrugated like I did. There's mine. I forgot I hit it. And it's been drying. It's been soaking up some glue, but it's okay because that's my underlayer. I had to put a ton of glue on that to get it to stick to that gold glitter. I mean, it's 
it's really, it doesn't like to stick. So I'm going to set that to the side. Now that it's stuck down and let that dry out, it won't show anyway. But here is the basic mechanism of the truck. And you can see that, you know, it's cut square and you can leave it square. I did that so that I could peek and do all that kind of stuff. Y'all, You guys have a nice pretty one. But we're going to put that together. So what I used on that one, let me pull this stuff over here without losing anything and I hope you guys did not throw away your teeny tiny green strips from that tree where you cut it because you're going to need those to fill in so that it looks like the tree is actually in the truck. And there's one more teeny tiny piece you're going to need that. Just going to stack that up and move it to the side for right now. These are the main workings of the lights. And there are a couple ways, and you may want to go around about it a little bit differently than what I've done. Um, but your headlight is going to be here. I don't know if I can get you guys up close enough to see that. But I, I had it draw on there. This is where your headlight is going to be. This is where your battery pack is going to be, which is this. And you want to put it on this way. Uh, no, that's wrong. You want to put it on this way. Trust me. You want to do that. Um, and this is just to house the battery. It may be a little long. You can shorten it. Do whatever you want. I just wanted you guys to know that there is going to be a positive and a negative side. And you just need it big enough to house your battery. And then, of course, your battery is going to have a plus on one side of it. And that's your positive side. And that's the side that's going to go down. And then you're going to have this piece fold over. So I can basically, this is kind of big. You can cut it down if you need to. But you're just going to fold that over to create your housing. And then you can just tack that down. You don't have to really have all of it. But it just made it easier for me this way. I can get some glue out of there. So I'm just going to tack that down. And I'll just go ahead and mark this so you guys don't get confused. That's our negative side. And you want to be able to fold that over. The next thing you want to do is you've got your copper tape. And when you're doing your tape, guys, make sure that you do not break it. If you break it, you may as well just pull it off and start over again. Um, Poochie, I'm using Art Glitter Glue. I sell this in my store at um, craftingwithapril.co and you can get that there. If you guys need the chibi lights, you can get those at Amazon if it'll let me post it. I'm going to try. There's the kits. But, and it seems like a lot, but if you break it down, um, it's about a dollar a card if you put one light in each card. So it's not really that expensive. You're bad. I mean, to make this card probably cost four or five bucks. Um, that's with your battery, your copper tape. I mean, there's a ton of tape. I've already made a couple of cards and boo-boos, and I've still got tons of tape here. So, And I had to peel it off twice because I broke it. So, But if you break it, you may as well peel it and start over. So what you're going to do for your headlight, you're just going to bring this down. You can try to guesstimate by how, how, how wide this little sticker is, the light. So, you know, it's going to cover in there. You want that light, it's right here. Let me see if I can bring it up where you guys can see it. It'll focus on it. It's tiny. But that little yellow dot in the middle is the light. And the easiest thing to remember is the wide part at the top is positive, And the bottom is negative. The small side is negative. So top is plus, bottom negative. Gets smaller as it gets negative.
I'm sorry, Stacy. I wish that it was working for you. If you refresh, it'll probably fix it. Because I'm showing a live um, strong feed. It's not even it's not even wavering at all. But you're going to place your positive side down and just stick it down right there. And it's okay if it covers that. That's just a guide. And you're going to bring this over your bottom of your positive board right here. And then we're going to work this up to the star. I'm just going to cut a piece off so I'm not trailing so much. If you need to bend it at all, kind of bend it slightly and gradually as you go up to the star. You don't want to fold it back on itself and make the sticky come um, stick to itself on here because if you do, it's not going to give you a good connection. But you just want to run it up to that star. And then I just take my bone folder and smooth it down. Don't rub it so hard against these edges that it breaks. And then you can just trim it off. And that's going to be your positive side for everything. Hey Deborah, glad you could join us. And then you're going to have a negative and I've got a little short piece here and that's going to work for this one here. And what you're going to do is on this negative side with this laid flat, go ahead and run your tape. Let's see if I can get it on straight here. You just don't want to break it. That's the that's the key. Don't break the tape. Just going to run it right there. Then I'm going to lift this up. And I'm going to fold it over and go down the back side of it. And hopefully I've got it long enough. And I'm just going to kind of make a turn with it. I don't want to break that tape and I don't want to stick it over itself because if I stick it over itself it's going not going to give me a good connection. See if I can get it down here. Yay! And you just want it to meet come down. It doesn't have to be pretty. Nobody's going to see it. And then you're going to put in your light. And that's why we've got it marked positive, negative, so you know which is going to the negative. And remember I said the small end was the negative. It needs to touch that tape. If I can get it on there, I need my tweezers. So I want the positive to touch the tape and the negative to touch the tape. And stick it down. So then when you, and you can test it and put your, when you push this down, it should light up. Is everybody with me so far? Sue, it's really easy. Really, really easy. Um, there are some videos out there, and Jamie will tell you, it tells you to cut this in half. You, you chance that it won't work. There's, there's no need to cut the tape in half. They give you plenty of tape. It's not hard. It's very easy, um, guys. It's just that you're going to run one strip, it, and you can put two or three lights on this one strip. One strip for your positive, and then I'm just going to run two negative strips because I have to come up and around, and it's to make them both meet, and that's the only difference. So then we're just going to get another piece of tape. And you can start with a single light instead of a double if you want to. And again, I'm just going to peel it back. It's really easy to work with. You just have to be gentle with this tape. You can't break it. That's the only thing. You don't want to break it. Let me show you what I mean. See? If you break it like that, 
what if you try to stack it on top of each other there's adhesive under there and that adhesive is not a good conductor it will not let it it will not let it um, the battery charge through it so then you're just going to run another strip right beside it because you're and you just want to make sure that it's the same width of your battery so that you can get both of them in there okay that's all you want to do make sure your back both of them will touch the battery and then you're just going to continue on I'm just going to give it a rub down I'll rub that one in a minute. I don't want to break my tape. And then I'm just going to work it into a little curve. And I'm going to bring it up to the star. I could have got a little closer, I think. You don't want your tapes to touch each other, your negative and your positive tape. You don't want them to touch. I'm just going to clip that off there. So now when I put my battery in there, in my other light, I need to get... And there are, on these little sheets, whoever wins the lights tonight, there are three lights to each sticker. You're just going to pull one off, just like that. And again, the positive is down here. Negative up top. And now both of them are lighting up. Let me see if I can get you guys a good picture on that. Because they are bright. And see, I, that battery's going to have to stay there for both of them to light up. Yeah, these are really fun. They can be a lot of fun. And these I would use for special cards. I wouldn't make a ton of these for like invites or something of that nature. But for a special birthday or a Christmas card, something like that, they're not really that expensive to make. Um, the lights you can buy in kits that, are, that have everything in them, but you're only going to get a limited amount of lights. The better deal is to buy the 30 light kit. And you can get them with all white lights. They come in a kit that has green, I believe it's blue, red, and yellow. Or it may be green, red, and yellow. Um, there's one that has a pink, orange, and green in it. Um, so it depends on what lights you want. But they're all the same price. But you get 30 of them. So you can potentially make 30 cards with one light. Um, and the tape is like $4. And you get... I think I got four rolls of tape for I it was like four bucks it's really cheap and then um, the batteries I think I gave I'd have to look it up I want to say ten bucks and I got 15 batteries something like that so your batteries are about a buck I'm gonna say a buck and your lights are a buck so you're about two dollars and fifty cents in this right here that's it I spend more than that sometimes on, on a sheet of paper. This gold stuff was $1.99 a sheet, so um, the corrugated gold. So you can skip maybe a, a fancier panel and put this in there. So the next thing we need to do is so that our battery stays where we need it to stay is you're going to have to use foam tape. And I just dropped my tweezers. I'm just going to cut a couple of little strips here so that I have them. And I want that battery to stay right there so that when it folds over, both of them touch. So I'm just going to put that battery in and I am going to put a piece of foam tape here to hold it down 
Then I'm going to put another piece on top of it. You probably want to do two, maybe three in height. and just stack those up. Don't press it down yet. As a matter of fact, put my paper back over the top of that so I don't stick it down. And you want to go on the sides as well. And you can use the little foam square dots if you want, if you prefer those. My scissors are sticking. I need to clean my Cricut scissors. But you're just creating a little cage and you don't have to um, I put mine up just a little bit over if you can see the fold there and that's going to help me create that without having to put a whole ton of tape in there because on these sides I just needed enough to keep that battery from sliding out and then I'm going to peel that tape and just stick that down so that when they press it, when they press on that door handle, it's going to light them up. Okay? But it's going to spring back up because of the foam tape, the way that I've got it in there. And then, of course, this one is going to be a little bit tricky. I had to split my foam tape in half because I couldn't find... I did... I will be honest, I did not want to realign that entire card because I couldn't get a half inch foam tape in there. So I decided I would just split it in half down that side. But you're just going to build up around your card keeping it inside and I would probably put a couple of pieces on the inside too I think I did here just to keep it from pressing all the way down when they're pressing on the card and playing with it just a couple of you can go over the tape at this point it won't hurt anything And just line it like I did this one all the way around and then in the centers and strategic points I don't like to be able to see the foam on the side of mine so I kind of come in just a little bit and I'm not going to go around like I did on that one completely around I really don't see the need for it this will stick it down to this green card stuck over here nicely I didn't put that cover on this one because I wanted to be able to pull it off to show you guys what it's going to look like underneath Just some oops too far that way. And I'll put another small piece down this side. You just don't want to cover up your light. I'm stuck. I'll put one more on that one to keep it up. I'm curling. And then I'll do two little strips. I did I did three in the center of mine. I did not stack the rest of this three high. Um 
I just wanted to kind of keep it even and I'm good with it being a little raised there at that center. And here's where the tricky part comes in. I am going to, and I just cut my vellum, and I don't know where I put it, but I did cut it. There it is. I cut a, just a scrap piece of gold and a scrap piece of clear, or plain, whatever you want to call it. And you're just going to stick it down. I forgot to close my glue. I used to put a magnet on there and I lost my magnet and haven't redone that. And you're just going to put those on the back to cover the holes. That's all you need to do there. Because we're going to be looking at the pretty side. This is the tricky part. You want to line this up pretty well so that your lights will be in the right spot. And I'm just going to stick a hole. I should have done it before I put my lights down. I forgot to do it. If you guys want to, you can do that. And that's going to kind of, kind of, sort of help me line it up a little bit and get it into place. I'm not going to press down hard in case I need to move it. And those are fine for me. They light up. So at that point, then I'm going to smooth that down and keep it stuck. And then just some glue and place it right there on top. Of that green panel. Now if you wanted to make this panel a different color you certainly could. I just wanted mine to kind of blend. I didn't want to put that third color in there to take away from the truck. So now we have that portion ready. Now you just at this point just put your light and your um, truck together on there. So let's start building that. And there should be, there we go. Fix and say there should be a hole in there for the headlight. And I'm just going to kind of glue this guy down at the strategic points and line up that headlight. If you get that in there like it's supposed to be, then this, probably speaking too soon, should line up like it's supposed to. Should, 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 should. And then we're going to this brown side of the truck on. And I took my fenders, guys, so that they would pop out. Um, and I did take a Copic marker, and I used Copic marker. This is the red Cricut cardstock, by the way, that's out of stock. Um, and I used RV69, the Peony Copic marker. You could use black or dark brown. It should probably work, too. And I just lined the top of the fender. I did not do the bottom. It's going to pop out anyway against the black wheel. But I just covered that edge so that it would make it pop up. So I have those. Next we put on the wheel.
and then the fender. Oops. Front fender is wider at the top, I believe. Yep. Almost got them backwards. Yeah, it's hard to tell, but it's just this one's a little narrower in the back. I think that's the right way, anyway. And then the fun part, all these teeny tiny pieces of the tree. I'm just going to, I did not dab all of the tops of my trees and all these little edges. That way I could curl them up slightly. If you'll notice on this part of the card, I, I did curl mine up a little bit. So if you want to do that, you can, but you need to do it before you glue it and put it on the truck. I probably should have put this down before putting down the brown piece, but that's okay. I'm just going to take my pokey tool and push it down in there. And then the star should come up right about where the tree is at. And then I just took my fine tip from my art glitter glue and I just ran a small bead of glue. You don't need much in those three slots. And one of these, you may have broken it when you took it off the mat. I did my first one. This one didn't break. It's the top one. Push it down in there. I think on the other one I did put it down. I put the truck down, then I put the, the tree on, and then I put this on. But I've already done it this way now. And if you want, you can leave this piece out. I just wanted mine to be the same color. I didn't want it to blend in because the background was green. I wanted to be sure that I got those pieces in there so it looked like the tree was actually in the truck. And then you have that teeny tiny piece there. And there you have that. And everybody thinks this is the hard part. Really, this was pretty pretty easy because I did the Cricut adhesive foil. And you can just basically peel that stuff almost just like a sticker. And just get it lined up. And then I'm going to press... And this is how I did this. It mine, This one ended up perfect. I don't know if they will all end up perfect. But I'm going to place my door handle in the section where it lights up both of them when pressed. So you're just going to take your finger and press. And right there is where mine is at. So I'm going to lay it down right there. And that's going to mark the spot for that. And then I just peeled off the tire centers. And then you may need your tweezers for this piece. Depends on how steady you are with it. It's a teeny tiny sliver and it goes just on that fender right there. Is everybody with me so far? And then of course you can put 
beads or whatever it is or rhinestones. I didn't want to go with rhinestones on this um, since it was the red truck. I wanted the lights to be the main attraction. I'm just going to put a couple here. I'm not even going to put as many as I did on the other one. But I'm just going to put a few Nouveau drops on mine. And that's probably not even straight, but it's okay. I'll live with it. And there you have it, guys. That's all there is to this truck. And you can stamp your sentiment. Before we got started, I just put my gold layer. I used the corrugated. It was really pretty. Uh, Cricut makes a corrugated, too, in colors that you can use. But I just wanted to use this gold. And I'm sorry, I got it at Hobby Lobby, not Michael's. Um, but you can get it on sale and get it for a dollar a sheet. So... But it makes a really pretty card, just gives it enough glitz and glamour, and then you can stamp a sentiment on the inside or have Cricut write your sentiment, whatever you want to do on that one. So everybody understand how that one goes now? If you have any problem, you can ask me, you can ask Jamie, she's done them too. Uh, we'll be happy to help you out with it. And if you look up Chibitronics, it was kind of hard to find, but I think I bookmarked it. They have layouts that show you how to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lights on one project. So um, I'll give you the link for that as well if you need it. And that, that can kind of help too, um, help you figure out how you want to lay your card out. Yay! I just love that card. I'm so glad, Jamie, you reminded me about the chibi lights. But like I said, I started it last year, did that file, and then I couldn't get it to work, and I was busy, and I just gave up. So I'm glad I tried it again. Because you guys know me, I like interactive cards, things that move and... Um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad I did, because um, I had really, I got so frustrated with it last year. I really did, guys. You, so you guys aren't alone when you think that it's hard. I got so frustrated with it that I was like, I'm not doing this. So, <laughs> so let's pick another number. We already have one winner, and Alice, I'll make sure that your number gets back put into the bucket after tonight's draw. And I have another pink number. Number 32, Claudia Brawley. Claudia wins the Chibitronic kit. So you're going to be able to do it if Claudia's here. Is Claudia still with us? Yeah, if that tape gets torn at all, it will not. Yay, there's Claudia. Uh, if you tear that tape at all, just peel it off and start over. Don't try to repair it because that's where the frustration comes in. I think Jamie can vouch for me there. It's better just to take it off and start over because they give you a ton of tape and it's really, really, really inexpensive. It's cheaper than our tear tape. so <laughs> It's like a dollar a roll. It's, it's really, really cheap. Hey, Joan, snuck in on me there. All right, guys. Again, I will not be here. I will be at the Mountain Makeathon next Monday. Uh, we will have two winners for Winner Winner Chicken Dinner Bingo next uh, week after. Um, so we'll do a live and we'll talk about anything you guys need, um, any projects. The 12 days of Christmas in July is coming to an end. If any of you get stuck on any of those projects, just ask. Come to the Patreon group and ask, or if it was a public file, ask in the public groups. We will help you out and tell you how those go together. If it's really, um, if it's not clicking or whatever, we will use that and put together that project um, on the next live so that you can see how it goes together.
Is everybody comfortable with all the projects so far? Anybody have any questions, anything you need answered about Design Space, any of the projects that you want to cover before we close tonight? Claudia, I have files from years and years and years of um, crafting. And I am, in the last two years, I started back with Cricut and putting them into design space. Um, I couldn't get my, recover my email from my old expression and Cricut craft room and they couldn't get it. So everything I had in there, I lost. Um, but I used to do Stampin' Up. I've done Stampin' Up a couple of times. Um, so, I mean, if I get in a lull and I can't think, then I use Pinterest. Um, that's why I did three cards this week to show you guys. It's okay to use Pinterest for inspiration. Change some things. Make it your own. Yeah, I've done a ton of files this week, so, and I've got... Three more days coming. I have one more sewing project coming out, and that's going to be a single file But for Patreons. Um, I'm not doing public sewing files because they have those in Design Space um, for that. Um, so I'll do that, and we'll finish up. I think I got another day of cards. I don't know where my list is at. There it is. I've got... Let me switch over so you guys can see me. Um, I've got... This was day nine. I did three boxes. That's right. We did the candy box. I did the door hanging box. And I did the 20 ounce cup box that everybody was asking me for. So we got those out. Um, tomorrow is a sewing project. It's a quick, but it's really cute. I think you guys are going to like it. Um, so that one's coming out tomorrow. It, it's something you can make in 30 minutes or less. Uh, I try to keep the sewing projects for this Christmas in July and Christmas holidays quick and simple because we get pushed for time at that time of the year. So we've got that. Three more days of cards, and then I don't know what to do for the last day. What do you guys want? Do you want more boxes? Do you want more cards? Do you want you know, ornaments. What do you guys want? Cards, ornaments. Okay. Okay, well, we have an ornament sewing project coming up tomorrow. I'll do three cards on day 11. Another light up design. Okay, I'll do two cards and an ornament. Okay, how about we do this? I card an ornament and a box on day 12. Rhinestones. Um, I do too, Hill. I haven't done rhinestones in so long. I don't have any of the supplies. I may do that when I get back from the Mountain Makeathon, um, just so that we can show how it goes, how to do it. Um, Debbie, I did look into that, um, doing a musical card. As a matter of fact, I think I sent one to Melody Lane for her birthday last year. It had the talking tags in it. Um, those are the easiest to do because you don't, ha and, and they're inexpensive that way. Because you can, if you can get the talking tags, they're hard to come by now. If you can get the talking tags, you can record your message on it through an app. And then all they do is scan it and they can play the message. Um, they do have sound cards, but the sound cards are like, I've been looking into it. I ordered one just to see and uh, where you can record what you want it to say. And, well, I put a bid in on it, put it that way, on, you know, that eBay channel. Anyway, I went over and bid on it. I'm not going to give more than $5 for it. They're, want, they're wanting to sell them from 11 to $17 for a base that has that in there. And without the base and just the, the board is like 14 bucks. So 
Um, that's a little bit out of the realm for most people for, to make a card. Um, but you can you can do them. Um, I found over in the doll section of Hobby Lobby and Michaels, they sell, it's a little round disc where they can play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, um, Jesus Loves Me. There's two or three songs, but they sell the little buttons that you can put in a card that's musical. So I'm, I may do one like that. So we could do a light up and a musical. So I, I, I might be able to pull that one off for you. Just to show you how to put one together. But if you really want the elaborate ones, they do have them over on Amazon and eBay. But be prepared. They are not cheap. Not at all. You could do what you do three cards of those for. You could do 90 of the light ups. <laughs> so that's the difference in price with the the talking cards. That's what I was saying, Karen. That's the easiest way where you can go. There's an app that will let you record. You can record whatever it is you want, and then you can put the QR code into the card for the recipient. They can scan it and play it. Um, if you can get the talking tags, that's the best way. The apps that I saw, you're going to have to pay for the app, and I think that there is a fee for doing it. Um, so, But the talking tags were free. They came with um, some Sizzix folders and Sizzix products. Sizzix used to include them. And then you just stuck, you recorded it, stuck that in there. They scanned it, and it was linked to that card. It had a little, they had little stickers that went in there, and they scanned the sticker. Where did you get them, Debbie? I couldn't find them. I looked yesterday and for those, and while I was looking around over on Amazon, and everything I found was $11 and $14. So if you don't mind sharing that link, yes, please. Please, please. That, because that's what these were, but they were some of them were loose and some of them were already encased in a five by seven card where you just decorated the outside and recorded your message. But I mean, making the base to to hold it is nothing. We can do that. A hundred and tenth birthday. Wow. Congratulations to her. Oh, I would probably do something in the gold and the foil acetate. Something, you know, extravagant. Something pretty. But then again, I don't know the grandmother. She might be one of these that are really funny, would like a funny card. It's going to depend on the person. Because we can do all sorts of birthday cards, but it's going to be what fits that person best. Uh, shoot it to me um, in the group, Debbie. You can post it over in the Patreon group. That's fine. Yeah, that's who I looked at, but his weren't. 367. They're about the only ones that do it. Um, I looked, well, I did bid, he had one listed for 49 cents and I bid on it up to X amount. Um, I don't know if I won it yet or not. Don't know. Maybe do her, uh, one of the musical ones like Debbie's talking about. I'll take a yeah, shoot me that shoot me that link over in the group, Debbie. I'll take a look at it and see if I can't grab or snag a couple of them. If I can snag a couple of them, because when I look at stuff like that, I look at how affordable it might be for you guys. Because just because I can look up and get one for forty nine cents or three dollars or yeah, um, you know, it doesn't mean that you guys will be able to get it for that. So I have to look at that too when I do these. But I will be happy to make a base for them. Not a problem. Uh, 
Okay, so that settles it on day 10, which is tomorrow we have the fabric ornament. Uh, day 11, we're going to have three cards. And day 12, we're going to have an ornament, a card, and a box. I will try to do some lives, Claudia. It's going to depend on how many people are doing lives and what they're going to allow us to do. I haven't been. Um, so I will try to do what I can for you guys. If I go live, it's going to be in the Patreon group. I thank you guys, and if you have any questions on any of the projects, like I said, don't hesitate to ask, either in the Cricut Crafting with April or the Cricut Maker or the Patreon group. Thank you to all my moderators. Greatly appreciate all the help you guys give. Thank you, Bonnie, for helping me test files, and thank you, Patreon supporters. Couldn't do this without you guys. Y'all have a wonderful night, and I'll see you Monday week.